Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Happy Memorial Day weekend. Let us stand and read the Apostles' Creed together. The words are going to be up on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. standing as we sing number 295 in the new hymnal, The Comforter Has Come, number 295.
Sorry, I was going over there and make a detour here. Uh, I have the first reading, and good morning. good morning. Glad to see you all. And I uh, get to read Psalms 104, verses 24 through 35. Lord, you have made many things with your wisdom. You make them all. The earth is full of your riches. Look at the sea, so big and wide, with creatures large and small that cannot be counted. Ships travel over the ocean, and there is a sea monster, Lebequin, which you made to play there. All these things depend upon you to give them their food at the right time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good food. When you turn away from them, they become frightened. When you take away their breath, they die and turn to dust. When you breathe on them, they are created, and you make the land new again. May the glory of the Lord be forever. May the Lord enjoy what he has made. He just looks at the earth and it shakes. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praises to my God as long as I live. May my thoughts please him. I am happy in the Lord. Let sinners be destroyed from the earth and let the wicked live no longer. My whole being praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> second reading is John chapter 20 verses 19 through 23 and it's titled Jesus appears to the disciples when it was evening on that day the first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for the fear of the Jews Jesus came and stood among them and said peace be with you after he said that he showed them his hands at his side then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father had sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. <laughs> Oh uh -huh. Of eternal life. This lectionary reading is taken from John chapter 7, verses seven, 37 through 39.
On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of the heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, who whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. good all the time this morning is the Sunday before Memorial Day tomorrow and here are some Bible verses for Memorial Day greater love has no one than this that someone laid down his life for his friends John 15 13 peace I leave with you my peace I give to you not as the world gives do I give to you let not your heart be troubled Neither let them be afraid. John 14, 22. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, and seek to show hospitality. Romans 12, 9 through 13. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law his med he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its seasons, and the leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Psalms 1. This morning in our announcements, we have Sunday school each Sunday at 10 a.m., worship services at 11. Our altar flowers today are given to honor past and present veterans that serve to honor and preserve our freedoms. The Good News Magazine, the May and June Magazine, is available in the foyer. It highlights the recent spiritual revival at Asbury College. Our Appalachian Pregnancy Care Baby Bottle Offering is continuing. Uh, please take a bottle if you haven't got one already and return it any Sunday before Father's Day, which is June the 18th. Or on Father's Day. Or on, okay, on Father's Day. <laughs> the Salem Directory and Upper Room Devotional is on the table in the foyer. Men's Prayer Breakfast is, each, is Wednesdays at 7.30 at Tudor's. Wednesday night we have fellowship at 5.30 p.m. and Bible study at 6. 7 o'clock will be a steering committee meeting. We still need some uh, new hymnals, if you want to contribute to that. Next Sunday will be graduation Sunday. Um, we'll honor our, high, our grade school, eighth graders, high school and college graduates next Sunday. So get your forms in to me and get pictures to Sandy and Larry so we can, they can create a slideshow for our graduates. June 11th is a church business meeting. This is the second announcement of that meeting. All members of our church need to attend as we will discuss transference of assets and elect church officers. Very important Sunday, so be here. We'll also have a dinner that day. It's a potluck. You can bring what you want. Just bring enough for everybody to eat. Uh, we'll have a sign-up sheet next week for, for sign-up uh, for what you want to bring for that dinner. Any other announcements? This morning we have some prayer concerns. Cooper Coleman had a brain aneurysm yesterday and was taken to the emergency room and had to have emergency surgery. And did he get shipped on to Cincinnati? And he has been shipped on to Cincinnati. 
Cooper sang Friday night. They had a, they've had a revival all week at the Pike for Freewill Baptist Church, and they had a special group, and Cooper got up and sang with that group. And his Aunt Kim had shared it yesterday morning, and I watched it, and tears rolling down my face, you know, and he, he was just praising the Lord that all his hope was in Jesus. So let's remember Cooper. Remember Kim. She's struggling with her radiation. She's had two weeks of treatments, but her blood pressure is going through the roof. Um, they even had to give her some extra blood pressure medicine last week before she could have her immun immunotherapy or her radiation. So remember Kim in prayer, and I know this isn't helping with that blood pressure issue. Remember all those that are struggling with cancer, all those who are taking care of them, all those who are sick and in our hospitals, we pray that God will touch and give them a healing touch. We pray for our nation, our first responders, uh, the Donald Chafin family, which is uh, David and Johnny's uncle, and the Benny Thacker family. Any spoken requests this morning? If not, we'll have a Memorial Day tribute right now. Just want to uh, say we've got a video. I I think I forgot to tell you, William, and we'll make sure the sound uh, is, is working. It's on the next slide, uh, and we do want to, before we do show that, though, uh, I want to mention that we have some of the old uh, Salem plates up here on the front row. Uh, if you'd like one, just come up and get one after the service. Uh, I can't see what it looks like, but it, I remember. It's from the centennial. Yeah. And uh, feel free to take one today or whenever. We also have some fans. Everybody, y'all can y'all can get one. Yes, that that would be good because it gets warm down there sometimes. Uh, in a little bit, we're also going to do the logo vote, and we'll put that up for you. Uh, we'll uh, hand these out in just in just a minute uh, before we take up the offering. Uh, so this time we'll have our video. John to help lead us in a song that uh, will be on the screen for those of us. I think that uh, it's also in the hymnal on 697, the new one. Let's stand. Uh, you want them to stand? Sure. Probably should. Let's stand and sing. 
America. Blake, if he will help pass out the logos uh, vote thing. Even if you've already voted, my understanding is you can vote again. Well, part of the reason is because there was such a close vote between uh, the choice number one and number two. Number three is out uh, because there were so few. But there was such a close vote between one and two that decided uh, Ron said it would be best to have another vote today and let's just see uh, where we stand. So you've got the Joker number one and then what's your second choice is? And we'll put these in the offering plate so we can go ahead and fill these out, please. Yeah. And you don't have to be a member to vote, by the way. Right. Just have to be present. Hard to vote if you're not. Yeah, that was your here. Thank you. So we're going to ask uh, our ushers to come forward. Richie, if you want to come up, and we're going to do our offering this morning.
God, as we go through this life, we know each day that we all fall short in some way. And I just pray, dear God, when we do, that you just show us the mistakes that we make, and we can be found best in you for forgiving grace that you give so freely. God, I pray for on this Memorial Sunday, and pray, dear God, for those veterans that lost what they had yes. and gave up their whole lives yes. just for the fact that we could have the honor to be in that worship service today and every day and the freedom to do what we would need to do in this life. God, I would pray now for this service. Pray for the words that go forth, that your blessings can be upon it, and we can all hear and obey what your word says. I pray for this offering as we present it in your name to this church. I pray, dear Lord, that we can use it wisely and it brings help to those in need. And dear God, when they receive the help that we give, let them know that we give it freely. Yeah, dear God, be with us in this day. Be with us in this service. Which in your name we pray. And amen. amen. So I think I forgot the pastoral prayer, but we did the prayer request. I uh, want to invite you to join me in the, uh, uh, in the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespass as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And I believe uh, John's going to come and lead us in the song. And uh, also, uh, did Ron and Beth say to put their vote in, or did somebody already do that? He said something about... W William, do you know if they, if they had their vote in for today? Okay, we'll, we'll look at that. Because there was a text I remember, something about that. We may need to add two votes to that. Absentee, are they allowed to vote absentee? <laughs>
Wow, that's one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. Thank you so much uh, for singing that and for reminding me of that song. And I understand it was a challenging song to play. Thank you, Johnny, for doing such a wonderful job. Let's give her a hand. Okay. So thank you for, so much for that. And uh, just a beautiful song, just a reminder. For those of you who may not have clued in yet, this is Pentecost Sunday, the day that the church was born when the Holy Spirit came. And you notice the color red. Does anybody know why it's red? Why red? Yeah, but any, that's right. A little more specific. There we go. Flaming tongues, flaming fire. It came down as a flame. That's why we have red. And uh, so when you see that, you know that this is, you know, anytime the colors change, there's a reason. We go through the specific seasons of the Christian year, uh, and you'll notice uh, a lot of times. It's uh, green in ordinary times as we're preparing for something, and then it changes to a specific color. For example, uh, it may be white. And so next week, I think it's Transfiguration Sunday, and it'll probably go back to white. Uh, we'll have uh, gold and white and different colors for Christmas. But these colors represent something very important for us, and that is the day of Pentecost. The word Pentecost means 50, and it was the 50th day after the Passover when the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2. They say that it's going to be a massive structure. And so, so tall that it's going to be taller than the Eiffel Tower. It'll be as wide as many of the biggest cruise ships that are on sale today. It will have 126 massive turbines. And it will be floating on the ocean like many of the uh, uh, gas and oil industries have things floating. It will be anchored to the ocean's floor. And they call it uh, wind catcher. It's still in, its, uh, it's still in the progress and still uh, working on it. But it will be so massive. Uh, it, it's a Norwegian company that's uh, making this. And it'll be so massive that it will, they say it will power over 10,000 homes in Europe. Imagine that, 126 turbines. And it'll be one of the tallest structures, so it'll be able to catch the winds, the, the massive winds from the ocean. That'll be a lot of power, won't it, if you think about it. It, the, the, the blades will actually be a little smaller than many of them, so that it'll propel faster and it will be higher than any other wind turbine, and it therefore will catch more wind. Now, since it's still on the drawing board, it's supposed to come out like next year. But there's still some things we don't know. For example, you know, will it be able to sustain the winds and the storms, uh, such as hurricanes? Will the massive rotator blades uh, destroy thousands of birds <laughs> as they fly into it? We don't know. That's still yet to be seen. But it's going to be an interesting and a very massive feat, uh, for sure, uh, when it comes out. Wind catcher. You can be looking for that. Well, on the day of Pentecost, there was another group of people who were sort of wind catchers as well. Because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came on that particular day. And it says when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Here they were. And there were people from all over the world, from all over the places, uh, different, at least more than a dozen different uh, countries. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Can you imagine being there and experiencing that, that incredible noise and feel the vibration from that coming that day? It was no... Uh, peace be still kind of thing. It was a massive an event. And this wind was not from a storm. It was from the Holy Spirit. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. You know, we all need that kind of power in our lives. Sometimes 
It seems like that we're going and going and going, and all of a sudden we, we're like that Energizer bunny, but eventually the battery starts to run down, of, and, and we just need a, something to pick us up and to keep us going. And sometimes we, you know, it may be coffee, but sometimes we need something stronger than coffee. We need the Holy Spirit. And the church needs that kind of power today, and that kind of power is available to you today. Now, one of the things I want to ask today as we look at this passage is, why did God send the Holy Spirit in the first place? And there's many reasons, but we're going to look at a couple reasons that's in this passage today. What was the purpose of God sending the Holy Spirit? Why did He need to come? Why did God need to send the Holy Spirit? And we know that Jesus said that I'm going to leave you and I, I can no longer be with every one of you and I can't be everyone, everywhere at one place as a person. But the Holy Spirit can. And when He comes, as a song we sung this morning, the Comforter has come. He will guide you. He will comfort you. So why do we need the Holy Spirit? Well, first of all, so God's Word could be proclaimed and understood. One of the reasons that God sent the Holy Spirit was so that the Word, His Word could be proclaimed. And I believe that the Word of God today uh, is of highest authority and it needs to be proclaimed throughout the world. And one of the things that the Holy Spirit does is it helps us proclaim the Word. Just think about the fact that the disciples were timid souls before the day of Pentecost and suddenly they begin to preach with boldness the Word of God. But not only that, the Holy Spirit will help us remember and to say the things that God wants us to say. And the Holy Spirit is very important. And I want us to understand today that the purpose of the Spirit was not to confuse people, but was to help people understand the Word of God when it's being preached. And you know, some of you may remember before you were saved, trying to read the Bible uh, was like reading another language for some of us. It's like, I don't understand any of this. And after we got saved, it began to make sense. I'm not saying we understand everything, but it makes much more sense than it once did. And then it says, divided tongues as of fire, hence the red, appeared among them, and tongues rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, we must take some time today to talk about speaking in tongues because it's something that is probably one of the most controversial, misunderstood, uh, misused gift uh, of, the, of the Scriptures. So I, wanna, I felt like we needed to take some time today to do that. But understand that there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, it says. And in this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them heard... <coughs> them speaking in the native language of each. And so what happened on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 sets a precedent for what the Holy Spirit and what speaking in tongues is all about. There's only three instances of speaking in tongues in the, in the book of Acts. And here's one of them. And after that I think it was similar to that. And there's just a few places where it's mentioned in the New Testament at all. But there's so much controversy around us today, I felt like we need to do that. So one of the purposes of, of, of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues was to bring clarity to the message of the gospel, not, the, not confusion. You see, Paul said, if I speak in a, in a tongue that no one understands, what good is that going to do? In other words, he said, I, I'd rather speak five words by my own understanding, so you can understand, than 10,000 words in a language that you do not understand. It would not benefit anyone today if I stood up here and preached to you from a language that did not make sense. Now, we want to talk a little bit about that today. I understand this too, that think about the day of Pentecost and, com and compare that to the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel was a time when the languages were confused and people could not understand. But the day of Pentecost, when, when Pentecost happened, it was a day when the languages were clearly understood. There was no confusion about it. It was a different thing. So I want to look at that. And they said in verse 7, And amazed and astonished they asked, Are not all these who speak in Galileans? 
And how is it that we hear each every one of us in our own native language? So they are listening to Peter preach, but yet they are hearing it in the language that they understand. So that's the miracle that as Peter is preaching the gospel, even though there's people there from all different countries with different languages, all of a sudden they could hear that as if an interpreter was uh, interpreting what he was saying. They understood it very clearly today. So I want to look at just a few of these things real quickly. A, couple, a few questions I want to address. Is speaking in tongues a valid gift and experience? I want to deal with that before we go on any further. And I want to say today uh, that uh, for a lot of people that I know, a lot of Christians, it, for them it is a valid gift. And I'm certainly not going to, uh, to say that it is not a valid thing in the way that they speak in tongues and believe. Uh, I personally uh, have never spoken in tongues, but I know people who say they have. And when we say speaking in tongues today, it, it's a little different from what was on the day of Pentecost because there are people who believe that God has given them kind of an ecstatic utterance or a language that is different from any language on earth. Now, I've never experienced that, but other people say they have. I'm not going to say that it's not valid. Uh, I definitely believe it's valid to them. Uh, but I will say this, that many of the people in the, uh, in the Bible, uh, not just the Bible, but in history, the spiritual giants, as far as we know, never spoke in tongues. John Wesley did not speak in tongues. Calvin never spoke in tongues. Uh, many of the, the great giants of the past never did that. And so... Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's something that was mentioned a few times in, in the early part of the Bible. Uh, Acts and Corinthians were very early books, and it seems like it was something that was going on, some kind of problem with that in the Corinthian church because Paul addressed it. So there was some issues of tongues, and we don't know exactly, and not a lot of information about that. But then if you read church history, there's not a lot said about tongues for his, uh, generations. Until finally, uh, a little bit in 1600, but really came on the scene in the early 19, uh, about 1901, uh, when a group of students began to what we call speaking in tongues today. And hence comes the modern charismatic and Pentecostal movement. So I'm not going to say today it's not a valid gift, I'm, but we want to talk a little bit about that because for some people, it is. But here's a few things I do want to say. Can you be filled with the Holy Spirit without speaking in tongues? Yes. Yes. There were those who believe in the charismatic movement that you cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit unless you speak in tongues. And that's the evidence of it. But that is not what the Bible teaches. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Many times uh, in the Bible they were. And and. And you can be filled with the Holy Spirit without speaking in tongues. Does it make you a better Christian to speak in tongues? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Uh, there are uh, many Christians, as I said, many spiritual giants of the past who never spoke in tongues. So I don't think that's an indication of spirituality. Should you seek the gift of tongues? Well, if you read what Paul says, he's, he, he, talked, he kind of put tongues on the very bottom of the list as important gifts. And he talked about faith, hope, and love, and some of these other gifts, uh, preaching and prophecy as greater gifts than tongues. And, and by the way, if it's a gift, it's not something you have to earn or beg for, right? You know, God will give that uh, if, if He chooses for you to have it. And the Bible says that in the church that there's diversities of gifts. Different people have different gifts. Not everyone has the same gift. Paul said, do all speak in tongues? The answer is no, not all do. So not everyone is supposed to have that gift. Even if you believe that it's a legitimate gift for today, not everyone is to have the same gifts. And then what was the purpose of tongues? And I already mentioned that I believe it was to bring clarity and understanding to the message of the gospel. God is not the author of confusion. And so if someone came in here today, and, and I've had this happen in churches I've pastored, and began to speak in a language that no one understood, I, I would have a conversation with them. Because unless there's a proper interpretation, 
then it's really not going to do anything but confuse and scare people. And I had that one time in the church where I pastored. The lady came in and, and uh, you know, a couple of times she prayed in, in, in tongues. And I didn't say too much about that. But then she got up and started doing it in front of the whole church. And honestly, it scared some of the children. And it was confusing. And it doesn't scare me because, I, you know, I grew up around those kind of things. I uh, used to attend a Pentecostal church. But uh, it did uh, cause some problems and confusion. That's not, God is not the author of confusion. And so uh, one of the things I do know that if it is done, it has to be done in the proper uh, manner, and that is with an interpretation, of course. So the purpose of the gift was to, to give clarity and so people understand God's Word. And the second reason the Holy Spirit was given is to get people ready for the coming of the Lord. You see, Jesus is coming back. Now, last week we talked about the ascension of Christ and how that Jesus left and they were standing there gazing. And he said, the same Jesus is coming back in the same manner. And this is something that the prophet Joel uh, prophesied about. He says in verse 12, all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others answered, uh, sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. They thought they were drunk. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, said, Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, they are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy and young men shall see visions, and old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show potents in the heavens, potents in the heavens above, signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so a good, uh, one of the reasons for God sending the Holy Spirit was to prepare us for the coming of the Lord so that we could understand God's Word and to know that Jesus is coming back. Listen, we need the power of the wind. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, that song that John sung about today, the winds that blow, and they that God is able to bring the Holy Spirit upon us today. And I think about, talk about a massive, powerful wind. It's going to be greater than any, um, anything that we can ever create, including the wind catcher. Because God is able to bring the power of the Holy Spirit to us today. It can make a person who's lost saved. It can change our lives and hearts and allow us to live for God today. And I hope today that you, uh, you know God. And I hope today you, you want to and desire His power in your life. Whatever gift that God is wanting to give you today, it's free. It comes today. All you have to do is come to Him and ask. And He's willing to bless you today. I want to ask the musicians to come up today. We're thankful today as we think about this being Memorial Day. And those that laid down their lives for us. And the red could just as easily symbolize the blood that was shed for you and I today. They left a legacy for us to remember. Just as the, Jesus left a legacy when he left this earth. And told them that he was leaving and the Holy Spirit would come. And today we invite you to come today. We want to ask you to sing a song today as we stand. Let's stand as we sing Spirit of the Living God, number page 299, and let's sing it through twice.
Pray God's Spirit would fall afresh on you in a new and powerful way, and that as you go, that God's presence will continue to go with you, and may you sense His presence in your life today. Amen. Amen. Let's sing Sent Forth by God's Blessing. Get your plates up front here. 